Alrighty, what is going on you guys? It's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to some more Witch on the Holy Night. And today is the day, ladies and gentlemen, that we will be finishing up this entire journey of this playthrough, man. Of course, I've already been in the main story and these are just the archives that I've been going through. And we only have three more uh, left with the wonderful water ploys. So we're gonna be finishing that up, getting the trophies and then getting this platinum trophy, man. And then we're, we're done. We're done with the game in its entirety, man. We are done with the game in its entirety. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Whew, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's get into it. The Wonderful War of Ploys, Part 4. Bittersweet Magecraft. Or Bittersweet Magecraft. I already saw. All right, we're in the sweets area. Ah, see, today we are working on the discussion puzzle. So, let's see. 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 Let's Hello, welcome. I'm surprised to see you out shopping during the day, Robin. Miss Alice, what are you doing here? Or what are you working here? What are you doing working here? Where the heck is the kid? You sure care a lot about trivial things for a bird brain. I'm in charge of the store today. You have a problem with that? Yeah, no, of course not. You fit right in. I assume you're here to satisfy your sweet tooth. What the? The sign hit him. Today, we're going to talk about a relatively safe boy. Okay, Robin, pick your favorite. <laughs> Would you Adam and Eve it? This bakery is a ploy Kishaw black market. Misaki's positively mental. <laughs> Would you Adam and Eve it? What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> Get, get comfortable here. It's a jack in the box called Six Sing Chocolate. So we did see this, I believe, in the main story. Yeah, we, we, we did end up seeing this one. It looks pretty plain and boring, but it's actually quite useful. Unlike some boys around here. Name, Six Sing Chocolate. Original form, storage box. Components, chocolate liqueur. Cocoa butter, powdered bone. Mm, one of those does not belong there. Effects. Contains 24 familiars. No combat ability. A network of birds that monitor Misaki Town. The birds seek out would-be criminals. The chocolates are also infused with magical energy, so they can be melted down as a first aid measure. Countermeasure. As the ploy Kishaw is no longer or is no stronger than normal familiars, it can be even destroyed by firearms. About 10 fly in power lines and die every day. If you close the box, all active birds change back into chocolate. Ah, okay. 
How the fuck was that? Okay, so it's like a little chocolate box with the chocolates, like little bonbons, but they turn into birds that she uses more like as a, uh, like as like a Intel slash recon type team, but because they have like the intelligence of a fucking bird, <laughs> they kill themselves on like uh, power lines, as it says here. That's pretty funny. But if you close the box, they become, they go back to chocolate. So what do you do? What does she do? Pick them back up or they, do they return to her? Huh. Oh yeah, this is the one I said that they look like uh, Dragon Balls. Because <laughs> they have the stars on them. Well, of course, a bird's a capable and elegant familiar. And that's precisely why I know that old sixpence bit you know, because of the bird connection. A sing song of six pence, a pocket full of rye, four and twenty black birds baked in a pie. Oh jeepers. Who'd murder innocent birds for no reason? Don't Continentals love a Richard the Third? Anyway, the king was in his counting house, counting out his money. The queen was in the parlor, eating bread and honey. That's the second verse. From that point onward, the song seems to turn into a bit of a political satire. So no, sounds like a day in the Kuonji mansion to me. It's not a king that's counting his money, it's a queen, and she's wearing a blue sweater. Sayonara, Robin. <laughs> Be gone, Robin. What's next? <laughs> Can't you say, are you okay, or I love you? Guess not. Uh, no prob by me. Tough love is still love. Huh? <laughs> what was that laugh? What the hell is this? Talk about fugly. A face only a mother could love. That's you. <laughs> Me? Yeah, your true form. It says Lost Robin Rondo on the tag. The name's wasted on you. Like it was chiseled by Michelangelo himself. The turtle? I knew from the moment I came through the door that this be the treasure of the store. I mean it. No detailed info needed for this one. You already got your time in the limelight in the main story. It's based on an old funeral song. It tells the story of a robin that was killed. The song asks, Who killed the robin? The funeral goers each respond with, I did. It's a song about finding the culprit. 
その後前日誕であるコック・ロビンとジェニー・レンの「幸せな球婚」が出版されこれまたヒット。It was a hugely popular Mother Goose rhyme, along with the marriage of Cock Robin and Jenny Wren, which was a prequel. I've never heard of this. Cock Robin no shino ato o utata, Suzume no saiban to shobats mo shuppa. Urayamashi wa, inze dake de o moke ne, Robin. After that, the trial and execution of the sparrow for killing Cock Robin, that's a long ass fucking name, was published, which follows the trial of the sparrow. You gotta be making a killing in royalties, Robin. I envy you. Alas, birds never get a penny. Anyway, Alice, did you know that the Robin is the national bird of Britain and it symbolizes Christmas? Didn't even like it, give me a chance to read it, but what the hell? <laughs> Land on the power lines? That'd be crazy. Oh no, she hit him so hard he went back to the mansion. <laughs> That's funny. Ain't no way you flew back here that fast. <laughs> We can't let your ego get too big. <laughs> It, it might be a little too late for that. Not much left to talk about. Nothing really worth showing off. I also forgot to turn off my fan, so I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's kind of, kind of shaking up my blue screen at the current moment. <laughs> Alice, Miss Alice, what's this third ploy here? It's a candy that looks like an eye. Medama yo. It's an eyeball. Medama pui candy. You mean a candy that looks like one, right? Honmono no medama yo. Miru. No. It's an actual eyeball. Wanna see? Mia! Ari san no hidari me! Gigon da ったっすか Oh! Your left eye's made out of glass? そういうわけではないのだけど、私の左目も黒い扱いなだけよ。That's not what I meant. It's used like a ploy. アクロスティックカってなんすか ?Boy, what's acrostics mean? Alright, name. Scripts, Humpty. Components, which history? Original form, none. Effects, simultaneous incantation. Acrostification of mystic eyes. Countermeasure. Requires a large amount of magical energy. So, uh, across. What the fuck? Acrostic. Acrostification cannot occur unless diddle diddle is active. Words have many meanings. Like the many p o r m e n t i u s uh, Lewis Carroll used. I, said, I think I said the word correctly, but I fucked up on the guy's name. How the hell does that work? Kagami no Kuni de Alice wa Humpty ni ko shit mo shita no. Shinanuru stove te do yu imi. And through the looking glass, Alice asked Humpty, What does the word slithy mean? Humpty wa kota eta wa. Umu, sore wa na. Shinayaka de nuruyaka to yu imi da. To which Humpty replied, Well, slithy means lith and slimy. Wakatte. Yowa, kotonaru ftatsu no imi o, atarashi kotoba toste umidasu rule henko. Sore ga, magan no akro ka yo. Got it. When you acrostify mystic eyes, you change the rules by mixing meanings to form a new word. Quote unquote. Betsuni Humpty ga model to yu wake dewa nai no dakedo. I'm not saying the concept is entirely based around Humpty Dumpty. She just gave it a name,、uh, name referencing his idea. So we got two more. We got the 
I'm assuming that's the egg pudding that we saw in uh, Anyone Can Sleep in Our Lives. And I don't remember the snowflake one. Brilliant. This is just a random question. But what would happen if you combine limited first edition and standard edition? Hmm. If you did that, you'd have a product with the first edition bonuses that would stay on the market forever. <laughs> so the new phrase would be special first edition or first standard edition. I think it's just called a first edition. No. You get bargain pin a uh, bargain bin. Heck. We apologize for any inappropriate remarks. What does that mean? <laughs> Ahem. As you can see, it's a tricky ploy to use. I'll be more careful in the future. Let's see. Next we have ah, this one. Nah. Let's save this one for another cockney rhyme. What about this one? Tadano just a failed creation. My first ploy ever. It doesn't have any real use. I just held on to it for sentimental value. この通り、魔術戦には使えないわ。形も良くないから、見せるものでもないのだけど。こういうのは思い出だから。As you can see, it's not very useful in mage battles. It doesn't look very nice either. Still, sentiments of value, right? Alright, name. Snow White. Hmm. Wonder where I got that name. <laughs> Components. First mistake. Effect. Powdery snow falls for a few minutes. A pretty cool one. Just a half for fun. Oh god, he's gonna blow up again. <laughs> this confectionery shapes like a brooch. Or shaped like a brooch. Wow, it's so sweet. You make the best sweets. They dropped the fucking fridge on me. Soro soro ne. Watashi wa saki ni kaette iru kara. Ato katazuke o yatte oite. That wraps up. That wraps up today's lesson. I'm heading home. You can clean up. Oh, she dropped the fucking fridge on this man. <laughs> oh no, sponsor. Toki Soup Baking Company, oh, LTD. Look, it's not limited. It's something I forgot what LTD stood for. All right, got Working Alice. All right, here we go. Jumping on to the Wonderful World of Poise Part Five, Roar the Great Three. I guess that's when we're learning about the three big ploys. Wasn't one of them the um? The moon during the, uh, what was it? During the um, amusement park fight? Amusement, what? Amusement park fight where she like summoned it and it like took shape of the moon, which I thought was pretty sick. It was so, it used like, it was like the shape of an upside down skull and it used the moon as like its eye. It was so fucking cool, dude. I love that. That was probably one of the, I think like, Besides, like, the whole thing, besides, like, the transition of Aoko moving forward in time, like, the, the white field and, the, like, the like the Milky Way galaxy behind her, so that, where her hairs were, I thought that was pretty sick, but I love that, that, just that one scene of the, of the Moon King, that thing was so sick, but here we go, part five, Roar the Great Three. Five, roar the great three. All right, we're climbing a mountain. Hey, Hana Sauten, you carate, three title call or second dish matters. 
What a way to start. Under a bright blue sky. Though it doesn't like Miss Alice is here yet. Pretty sure I got the right time and place. Hmm. Maybe I should get a start and save some face. I love Alice. She's probably my favorite character in this entire story. No, that won't be necessary. I've been camping out here since yesterday. Oh, look at her! Rockin' the, uh, rockin' the, uh, the what's it called, man? Oh, oh, Cheek that got no, uh, I got, like, no hair. Damn. <laughs> Miss Alice, Whew, talk about an overprepared. <laughs> Lol, you're taking this way too seriously. Oh, right, watch, he's gonna end up getting like frostbite or something like that. Amateur bardo. She just threw a climbing axe at this bird's forehead. Okay, huh. spoken like a true amateur. Yeah. Yama wa amakumi koto yo. Never underestimate mountain climbing. Some migrating birds die trying to make it over the mountains, did you know? You dance a little bit of a Stay prepared or die. The mountain knows no mercy. Disrespect the gods here at your own peril. Right, hold on, what is a Jalfreji? Or Jalfreji? Oh, it's curry. From what I just see. From Bengal. Bengal. It's just chicken curry. <laughs> yep. Your chicken follows, uh, Jal, uh, is it, is it Jalfe? Sorry, is it, fuck, <laughs> fuck it up here. Is it Jalfreji or is it Halfrezi? As a, I don't know, so I've never had it. I'll say it again. Don't underestimate me or the mountain. I'm twice as prepared today than I am normally. Crikey. You're really into it, eh? So, why are you so proud of the time, Robin? I'm feeling good today, so let's talk to you a little bit more. Anyway, Robin, it's time for the wonderful water ploys again. And since I'm, such in, a, hey, what? And since I'm in such a good mood today, I'll talk about something very special I've been saving. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Great Three Ploys. Your mom's... 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 Whatever, the first generation. Three miracles passed down from the first generation. Oh, like mom said, great, great. Hold on. Ooh, feeling the sneeze. Hold on. Ooh, okay, it didn't, it didn't, what's it called? But man, I felt that. Oh, God. Damn. Damn, whew. Good. Alright, here we go. That's what we're talking about, right? The three masterpieces forged by the first witch? Okay, we saw... Okay, so we saw... Shut up, Robin. The Thames trolled the giant, the bridge giant. We saw that when she used it twice. 
Flat Snark, Oil of the Moon, that was during the uh, amusement park fight. That was the that was the moon one, which I thought was sick. And her, what's the third one? I don't remember the third one. Did she ever use the third one? I don't think so. Okay, so she has an in story. That's still a secret. This time I'll talk about Thames. I don't know why they didn't have the actual actress sing it like she did in the main story. It's based on the Mother Goose nursing rhyme, London Bridge. London Bridge is broken down, broken down, broken down. London Bridge is broken down, my fair lady. You get that once from me, okay? Name, Bridge Giant, Components. Varies it with version, original form, figurine of a lady, manifestation size, the slash suppression, varies with summoning site, weakness, can only be summoned near a river, no matter the golem size, it will cease function if, if its original form is broken. Wasn't that a game too? I, I don't know if you guys remember back in like elementary school, you had the two people hold their arms out. Like held them up and they would sing it. They would sing London Bridge and then like the per uh, like another kid had to go underneath their arm, or, uh, underneath the arm, you know, simulated the bridge. And then when they finished it, they they like closed down on the person. That's so like you know, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember that. I remember that growing up. I remember my, uh, my classroom doing it like once or twice back in elementary school, but. I thought that's a oh, that's an old. I pulled that one from the deep recesses of my fucking mind for that <laughs> for that one, dude. All right, kids often sing this one in school, so it's pretty well known. Also known as great, but what now, troll? Also uh, only useful against the most trivial of trivial enemies. Well, it didn't work against fucking uh, Bayo, so that's the fact. <laughs> it's funny how one of the great three couldn't beat a wolf, but it took one punch from a normal human boy to, to, <laughs> to put that man down for the count, or that kid wolf down for the count. <laughs> no, it just needs to be used against the right enemy. And honestly, I'm not so capable with it. I have a hard time using Thames. I can only manifest them up to his second form. I don't know the lyrics to his third and fourth. To his third and fourth. Oh, so there's more forms? Oh, that's pretty cool. That would have been pretty close, eh? Well, I mean, I feel like if you know the entirety of the London Bridge nursery rhyme you should be able to get it starting in fourth form so i think alice is just lazy in this part what are you talking about the lyrics to london bridge wood and clay will wash away bricks and mortar will not stay Iron and steel will bend and bow. Silver and gold will be stolen away. Thames is the boy based on London Bridge, but he's changed throughout the ages. He has four different forms based on the nursery rhyme. Wood, stone, and then two others. Are you sure you want to be giving away secret information like that? Yeah. It's fine. These days, anyone can look up the lyrics to London Bridge and find them out for themselves. Well, 
ネタをばらしても支障はないでしょ And besides, the best I can do is use a stone form. So it's not really, or so it isn't really a problem if people find out. Why can't you use the others? I'm just not interested in human civilization. In my mind, the bridge only goes up to wood and stone. I don't know if you could learn the steel shit. I, I would prefer the steel fucking golem than the stone one, in my opinion, bro. Come on. <laughs> That'd be crazy, dude. It'd be like an iron golem from Minecraft. That thing will just tank everything. Come on, we saw what the hell what happened to the stone one against Beowulf. Imagine if that was the steel one or whatever the hell the fourth one is. Like, I don't know what I don't know the lyrics to London Bridge personally, so I don't know. But steel? Come on now, let's be honest here. Now you're just being lazy, Alice. <laughs> what? You mean to tell me the invincible Alice actually has a weakness? Erm, actually, now that I think about it, you lost a great hopping pot of times. So much for the invincible. Not that I want to talk. Rumor has it the Thames Troll is the strongest golem in the world. How strong would it be at its max power? So, Thames or Saigoma de Kenchik de Kid Majonga, Moshi Gendai in Irunona. Well, if there was a witch alive today who could take Thames to his final form, so no Thames ever, Okuno Teo Dashkita Aoko demo, Taoskirena. And even Alko wouldn't be able to defeat it using her most powerful abilities. You know, London, the smoggy heart of the Industrial Revolution, Thames would over, uh, overshadow even that. <laughs> Wowzers. A whole city? Blimey. Is that true? Or are you just saying that? You really need to cut the showing off, Alice. Take this as a heartfelt advice from your most beloved boy. Most appreciated. Well, if I'm going to improve, I should start by backing up my statements. You can help me. Thames, get out here. Tell this bird what you can do. Oh, sure. As if this thing could do anything to. Wait a tick. You look stronger than usual. And I've got nowhere to escape. Hey, you're a bird. Fly up. I don't know, man. <laughs> Just fucking fly up, dude. Just, you, can, you can do that. You're a bird. What the hell? <laughs> so, yo. Remember what I said. The mountain knows no mercy. Dude, he looked at me like, I didn't think she meant like this. <laughs> He's gonna get crushed. Yep. <laughs> Sponsor? I don't know. And she's being carried by the fucking by Robin. <laughs> Alice's Echo. Extra the Wonderful World of Poise. Part 5 Red. 
All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The final one. The Wonderful World of Ploys Part 6. Ooh, we get to see probably my favorite, Flat Snark. Because, I, I re again, I really like that scene. That was, that was such an awesome scene, dude. Because I think Sojo was like, why the hell does it look like that? And they're just like, oh, it's a face. <laughs> It was it was like such cool imagery because you had him snark in the background. They had like Alice in the foreground. It looks so sick. <laughs> uh, here we go. So wonderful water boys part six, six magic castle in the mist flat snark. All right, let's do this. Let's finish this up, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this one she blew up the fucking moon. Alka at least did. Awesome. This movie doesn't have subtitles, but I actually have lines. That's awesome. I know. I found them annoying, so I spoke with the editor and had them cut. I also find it funny that Aoko looks like she's just having a spasm attack. <laughs> Great. Uh, great, as always. We're gonna, t uh, we're gonna telecom tower you with praise, Miss Alice. So I'm the only one acting as Silent Flick. The Great Three. This is the second one, right? Yep. And just so everyone knows, Snark's body is liquid. Ah, that's why some call him the Oil of the Moon. Who gave him the name Flat Snark anyway? Someone you know well. Before I met her, I never gave my ploys names. I just called them number one, number two, and so on, based on strength, importance, and whatever I felt like. You actually order them? Kind of lazy not giving them a name. Then again, makes sense to keep it simple. But why so orderly? <laughs> the little Alice there. If I gave them random numbers, that'd be confusing. Which one's strongest and which one I like most depends on my mood. I changed the order based on how I felt. Diddle Diddle was always number one, though. Things would usually be three or four. Ah, I remember. I was in a while and I was in a while and I was in a while and I was in a while. Oh, I just remembered. When playing with her and the ploys, my numbering system did cause a, a problem. Alice, is that Riddle? I think that's supposed to be Riddell. That's Riddell. Okay. Alice, my new daddy is coming tomorrow. Can I borrow the sixth boy? I really want to impress him. So I told her, I was in the mood. So, I let her borrow what I decided was my sixth favorite ploy that day. Mm, I think I know where this is going, but I'll bite. What ploy was it? It was a perfume she later called Galvanfron, 
Why don't you put it on? You can only speak in curse words and slang for an entire day. Oh, so wait, Riddell's the one who, um... Who is the one that, uh... That named the boys? That's actually pretty sick. That's pretty cool. For a character that we only see in one side story. That's actually really sick. That's when she came in with the idea of naming ploys. For some reason, she looked like she had been crying. This one's Sweet's Hearts. This is Scripps Dump Humpty. I said Dumpty, wrong one. This is Diddle Diddle. This is Flat Snark. Those are their names from now on, okay? They say that a name defines you, right? I didn't want to give them the wrong one, so I just categorized them based on how I felt. Anta no kibun nante tanin niwa wakan naishi. Sono tabini, atashi no ume ga kurutte ikkoto, mo choto kiniste chodai. Nobody can tell how you're feeling. You should realize that what you do affects me too. Plus, naming ploys is going to be the next big thing for certain. People will tire of it eventually, but still. なんで同説つけるなら生かした方がグッドでバット。せっかく私たちだけのオリジナリティなのよ。ポップに流行らせなくちゃ大損だわ。and if we're going to name them, we have to name them something trendy. Trendiness is key. I've given my ploys names ever since. It's kind of a hassle remembering them all, but I've never mixed them up now. Seemed like such an obvious thing to do after the fact, but it was such an original idea at the time. Genius, really. Yeah, genius. Unlike you. <laughs> I don't know that's how that worked in the, in the store, but sure. Ouch. Look at that oil burn. What kind of ploy is Snark exactly? We went over this in the main story. If you're looking for more detailed information, well... Alright, name, Oil of the Moon, original form, oil, makes sense, right? Components, said to be the belly fat from a nomadic god, dating back from the age, or to the age of gods. Manifestation, oil floating, floating like a membrane over the night, hides its true form with uh, clouds and fog, weakness, fire. Um, so Right on. So Alco burned all your precious oil. How's one gonna get more of that Bodhi and Doyle? Unfortunately, no. Snark cannot be recreated in this era. Some people just love destroying cultural relics, don't they? Well, kind of love laying waste to civilization. This is all Snark's got, though. I thought that troll was bad enough. 
some great ploy. I love me a, a good tall tale. You know, I'm a pretty good damn ploy. What? Pretty damn good ploy. I fucked that one up royally. <laughs> I never waste anything. Hey, you there. Grab me up a bag of chips with this oil. Not a bad idea, Robin. For you, at least. You know, I could go for some fried chicken. Hmm. The menu says hot dogs, popcorn, crisps, uh, but definitely no bird based food. Whenever I go watch a flick, I always check their menu first. Fried chicken's a no-go. What's with all the pen and ink? Well, to be fair, the, at least the, the movie theaters that I go to don't have actual... Uh, I mean, they have like the popcorn and, you know, like chips and shit and candies, but... Um, I know, like, there's some, like, movie theaters you can actually, like, fucking, like, legit dinners and shit, which I think is pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't think Florida, I probably, Florida probably does have those type of theaters, just not in my area. I know. Don't worry. I'm not actually hungry. I just want them to fry a certain bird for me. <laughs> hey, 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 come on now. You, you wouldn't. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, Another cause of death to add to your collection. <laughs> I need a better hobby. Anyway, a sand shoe is for your offer, but I'm gonna have to decline. Looks like the movie's over. Few theaters show films and plays at the same time these days. Yeah, I wanted to end this by introducing my third ploy, but I'll have to say that for next time. There is no next time, because <laughs> that's how it ends. To all of you who stuck with us through the lengthy main story and the side story that could either end quickly or take forever. Damn, are they? They're wow. Okay, the devs are speaking to me on a personal level because, brother, that's happened to me a few times, especially with the side stories. This marks the end of Witch on the Holy Night. Let us continue the tale someday, someplace when a bright roaming star drops from the sky onto your lap or into your lap. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for sharing this long journey with us. Sponsor, Inc. Something World Tour. But there we go. Alice's Romance. And that should be the Platinum. Hey, all stories completed. Come on, we got one more. Ah, there we go. We'll finish here. There we go, man. There we go, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have got 
the platinum trophy for witch on the holy night man all the trophies here as you can see when we first started here was 12 18 2022 uh so not nearly two years but a good year of the of me playing this game because i did i did play i did start witch on the holy night in like the middle of december of 2022 and then basically through the entire year of 2023 just playing this game and I, i've said it i've said it before i've had a blast playing this game it is so much fun uh, again as for someone who's not the biggest fan of visual novels man i again i really enjoyed this game i love it it's great it's great <laughs> there we go we got everything there man alice's romance all stories completed so there we go we got the beautiful platinum we'll finish here we god damn god damn but that's going to be the end of this little adventure that i call witch on the holy night this playthrough is finally finished man just want to thank everybody that has been with me since basically the beginning of this playthrough man i really do appreciate you guys but do not worry i'm not going away because guess what we have in just a few weeks we do have the official translation for the Suki Kime remake, and you know your boy's going to be on that one. So it has been your boy White Album. Hopefully you guys, again, did enjoy today's video, and I hope you guys enjoyed the playthrough. Like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Okay, I know I I know I just ended the video, but I'm going to put this little quick a uh, little clip here. But look at this, man. When you actually complete the game, you get this really cool uh menu screen. That's actually pretty sick, man. That's actually pretty sick. That's actually pretty sick. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And the music changed too. I just noticed that. God damn. What a great game. What a great great game, man. What a great game.